Hmm, how to take care of floating plants. Let me think. Subscribe to my channel. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. It's me, your boy, Bob Moss. Well, this is William M. Buttlicker. Here today with the start of my plant care guide. I did the ram's horn snail guide. I already did a basic shrimp care guide. I did the uh, aquarium microfauna. I did aquarium plant nutrient deficiencies, just general stuff. So now we're gonna get more specific into the individual types of plants. All right, yeah. So today we're gonna be talking about floating plants. Floating plants are relatively easy. I don't find them very difficult. The main thing with floaters is gonna be your lighting. Uh, they can survive a wide variety of water conditions from hard to soft, even some brackish for some of them. But the lighting that you have is really what's gonna affect the growth the most. From what I have seen, the amount I fertilize doesn't really change the growth speed and the the amount of feeding and waste in there. I mean, they do suck up the nitrates, but really to get the explosive growth. And if you wanted like your whole tank covered in floating plants, it's gonna be the, the lighting that's the key to that. So let's go to the tanks and let's talk about it a little bit more. And the one, and the two, and the one, two, three, four. Okay, so besides lighting, the other thing that's really gonna affect your floating plants is flow so too much flow will constantly push the plants underneath the surface of the water this is going to slowly suffocate them they're going to turn brown on you and die and this is uh, honestly the only way i've seen people kill floating plants like a little bit of duckweed from the uh from the local fish store tends to take over your tank a little bit of this a little bit of that you know it's going to take over but if you have a lot of flow you actually might have some difficulty with floating plants that's why if you look in some of my tanks i have these uh, floating plant rings the rings just help keep the plants all you know in one area keep them away from the flow in the ones where i have hang on back filters i actually have the ring around the hang on back filter rather than around the plants themselves to keep them away from the flow so that there's this area where the flow can dump in and yeah you've you guys have seen my tanks that is not true redacted so lighting flow you may notice some plants like uh, frogbit water lettuce maybe red root floaters they're a bit more demanding than say salvinia or um, duckweed so if you look at some of my frogbit it does have the black like tiger striping is what i call it and i believe that's a bit of a phosphorus deficiency uh, nothing to worry about. I mean, the plants are still growing. It's just something to make note of, and maybe I need to fertilize these plants or these tanks a little bit more. That makes sense to me. Now, if you are noticing, you know, some different coloration, things like this, it could be, like I said, the nutrient deficiency, and that I recommend to just go check out my video. I have the whole video on the nutrient deficiency stuff. I'm not going to get into that here. So finally, just an issue you can run in with the floating plants is that they can cover the surface of the tank and kind of clog things up. And if you don't have enough flow, you know, they're, they're going to take over. So you're gonna have to constantly remove them. Otherwise, they'll actually affect the um, amount of, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? And what is that called? Microgemin. Boom, yes. It's going to affect the amount of oxygenation. <laughs> Jeez. in the tank that's the word i'm looking for oxygenation because there's not going to be as much like surface area uh, breakage with the bubbles and the flow because the plants are everywhere so you may run into issues there <gasps> so i actually remove some plants pretty much every week so if you look like in my shrimp tanks here there's not there's they're really not that many plants I have a bucket and I sell them and I make food out of them as you may have seen in my other videos. Check those out guys. <laughs> no, I don't really feel like it. So floating plants in a nutshell, it's going to be your lighting, the main thing. Then it's going to be the flow. You may have run into some nutrient deficiencies in the fancier, the more, I don't know, expensive, the bigger, the bigger leafed uh, floating plants. That's what I mean to say, bigger leaf floating plants. But all in all, the floaters are, are probably the easiest plant, maybe besides moss, that you're gonna have in your tank. You can see they're really, really useful for shrimp and even fish. They catch stuff in the root systems 
and then it allows like my shrimp to come up and graze of course they're not grazing on it right now because i need to i'm filming i'm trying to get b-roll footage and of course they're not friggin' out and then there are some little differences in between the different floating plants with like how they grow so frog bit and i think water lettuce it actually shoots out like a runner that starts a new plant and you actually want to leave that runner connected as long as possible the main plant will help feed that new plant and help it grow and it will disconnect on its own once the plant is ready i thought what we had was special things like salvinia they just kind of get bigger and bigger and then i noticed they actually like break apart and i'm pretty sure they put like spores into the water i know duckweed does like duckweed is an issue if you have it in your tank and you remove all of it there could be the spores in the water still so it may come back and you have to remove it again and again and again and again you know me i always forget something so when we're talking about like frog bit specifically, frog bit's a weird one. You just, you don't want to get the tops of it wet. Uh, I know in some of the footage that you're gonna see or that you saw, you saw, you already saw it. This is, this is future Bob Moss. Hi. How the are you? So you don't wanna get the tops wet because then it's gonna yellow much more than say duckweed or salvinia. Salvinia can get wet on the top. I think water, almost every other floating plant, it makes sense a floating plant can get wet, but frog bit, for some reason, if you get the tops wet, it's gonna slowly die off on you. Okay, get in. You can see it grows, the, the leaf grows on top of the other leaf and this bottom leaf, it turns yellow and dies just because it's being submerged. Um, there's a lot to do with it. I don't, I'm not a, botanist uh, sorry i don't speak italian but that's what happens uh, yeah that's floating plants in a nutshell pretty simple pretty simple thanks so much for watching thanks for making it all the way to the end make sure to leave a like below comment subscribe to my channel if you haven't already guys it really helps out all this stuff helps out my growth it's really cool to see the support and just see the channel growing like this. Today's secret end of the video comment is gonna be I hate duckweed. So make sure to leave that comment below and I'll add you to the list here or here or maybe scrolling whatever list I decide to add here. <laughs> All right, thanks again for watching and remember, keep your shrimp hand strong. Till next time, bye bye now. But liquor, our prices have never been lower. I did the ram's horn snail guide. I've already done a basic shrimp, bleh, I can't talk. So today we're gonna to be talking about floating plants. Floating, but the, the lighting that you have, the most of them are gonna want medium to high lighting. Fuck. Too much flow is going to push the plants, push the plants. <laughs> Too much flow is going to constantly push the plants underneath the water, uh, the, 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 my God. I, uh, and when I, uh, you can see they're really, fuck. So thank you so much for <laughs> Today's secret comment is gonna be, I hate duckery, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, that's pretty quick.